all that. How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I'm settling fine. Perfect. Can't ask for a better start. Um, right now, I'm just living in Leeds. It's only a half hour from the training ground, which is a nice area. And it's just, yeah, I like it so far. Yeah, not bad. I'm a northerner myself, so good to see you're um, sort of adapting to it. How have you found like adapting to life off the pitch after you know being in London all your life, probably? Um, at first, it's a lot different. So obviously being up here, away from the family and all my friends, are a lot different. But after a while, I just got used to it because I have to do it to, to achieve my goals. So I'm happy to do that. And now I'm pretty comfortable. You, you've kept your head screwed on as well. I've seen some of your interviews, especially the one after your um, winning goal um, at the weekend. And, and you were like, well, I just got criticised for mistakes. So can you tell me a bit about sort of like, you, you're probably happy with your performances, but also things you need to improve on. Yeah, they've been all right for obviously just coming to the championship and adjusting. It's been hard. It's been tough mentally and physically. And it's taken a lot for me to adjust it. But training every day at such a hard tempo and the requirements the team needs from me. Um, I've just slowly started to adjust and I'm still not there yet. I'm still working on it, but hopefully I can just keep getting better and keep helping the team achieve our goals. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll um, throw back to Huddersfield in a bit, but I just wanted to talk about, you're actually from further than London. You're from Southampton, aren't you? So uh, you really are far from home. Can you tell me a bit about growing up in Southampton, what it was like and, and how did you just simply fall in love with football there? Um, yeah, so I was born in Southampton, raised in Southampton, and um, I started playing football for my Sunday team when I was five, so I started training when I was young, and then from there, I just got linked with Chelsea and Southampton at, this time, at the same time, and I was just adding all the options up, me and the family, and then we decided to go with Chelsea from when I was eight, so we joined under nines, and then from there, it's just been training four times a week and travelling up, my mum and my dad both driving up every day, so it's hard for them especially so i'm grateful for everything they've done for me and then yeah from when i was i think 14 i moved up and started doing full time so that's when i was away from southampton so a lot changed then so i've kind of i was kind of adjusted to not living on my own but being away from everyone so when i came up here it's been an easier transition so i'm kind of used to it yeah absolutely i can imagine that but you know it is quite far isn't it um cobham to um southampton so um, how big of influence were your mum and dad on your career and, and what have they done for you to sort of, you know, live your passion, really? Everything. Well, all I can do is thank them for everything they've done. So if they didn't have the determination, basically, to drive me, take me to games, training, um, they've not been able to have certain jobs or live the career or the pathway they wanted to put me first. So I just got to thank them and keep working hard to reward them in life. Yeah, it's amazing. Not only is it your sacrifice, but it's theirs as well, isn't it? Um, can you tell me a bit about just simply how you fell in love with football? Did you watch on TV a lot? Were you just playing with the ball all the time when you were a kid? What yeah. was what, the passion? Where did that come from? Uh, all my family have been always been playing football, so I've just grown up around it. As a kid, as you do, you just always want to be a footballer. And that was basically it. I was just playing every day. Even when I wasn't training, I was just outside kicking ball in the cage. Something simple as that. And then you just, it becomes day-to-day thing. You're just used to it. after school, you just go and play football. It's all you knew. And then from there, I just kept falling in love bit by bit. And then I was getting more rewards from it. And then I just, it just got better and better and better. And it keeps getting better until where I am now. And I hope it just keeps taking that, that path. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, you're living the life for sure. Um, who are you watching when you're a kid? And uh, who are you watching now? Sort of Who are your sort of role models or idols or... Just play as you liked. Uh, growing up, it was always Steven Gerrard. Oh, nice. Watching him, the leader, it was just, I was just amazed by him. I used to have pictures of him in my room. And I was like, I used to always just try and copy him, like before training or before he was playing football. I just always think I was him. I was just dressed up as him, have the same boots sort of thing. And then I was just, that was it. And I just looked up to him. And then obviously I wasn't really a, never a centre midfielder, but I always try having the same mentality as him. So it, it just went from there. And then now I look up to most of the youngsters from Chelsea. So players like Mason, Reese, Callum, all them. And it's just, that's what I want to do. Yeah, those boys have made some amazing achievements. But can you tell me a bit about your, um, you, you know, when you got scouted? Were you like, you're playing at City Central, right? Is that a team in Southampton City Centre? Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, do you remember the day you were scouted? 
Yeah, I remember the time uh, we had a game and I think the game got cancelled and um, a scout called Graham Castle was there. And I remember him telling me just, he, I remember I was running around, it was a bit icy at the time. He said, Levi, be careful. And I turned around to one of my friends. I was like, oh, is that your granddad? He's like, no, I don't know who it is. And I was like, oh, I don't know who it is either. And after my dad told me that, obviously he's from his Chelsea, Chelsea scout and he's gave him a card. And I was like, like, I didn't think, back then you didn't think it was like possible, like Chelsea Academy. I didn't really think it was a thing, obviously at Southampton or that was it. So it wasn't, it wasn't really realistic for me. And then he told me, yeah, he came and watch you and then we you to have a trial. And I was like, I, did, I just didn't understand. It was amazing. And then we went there for our first trial. Me and Jamal Muziala went up together for a trial. And we was there and we was just training with everyone. It was like, it was just, normal we just kicking ball as we normally would and we just enjoyed it and we done well and then from there we both got offered contracts and just kept going on yeah no that's unbelievable and and yeah I, I was gonna say you grew up around Jamal Musiala and, and we all know he was at Chelsea Academy so um was he one of your best friends growing up yeah definitely we played for the same Sunday team so from then when he moved to Southampton we just done everything together and we still keep in touch now and yeah he's a good mate Wow, it must be amazing. He, you know, you're the same age as him, but he's achieving everything a bit early in his career. What have you made of looking over at one of your best mates achieving what he's done? It's it's amazing. It gives me goosebumps every time I see him because it's just, I know I've I've been there for everything he's been through, the grind which we both had to go through, and seeing him get so many rewards now is just inspiring. I know it's it's possible. So if I keep working hard, I can get the same achievements that he got. Yeah, it's brilliant. And and obviously you're excelling in defence now in the Championship. Um, what point did you become a defender or have you always been a sort of defender type? Because usually when people get signed up, they're usually banging in goals and then bit by bit they work their way back to defence usually. I uh, started off as a left winger and I think I was just lazy. So yeah. when everyone was attacking, I'll just stay back. So I was like, everyone's going about much, so I'll just be here. And then I went into a left back and then under 15 season, we started playing, James Simmons was our manager and we started playing three at the back. At the same time, like Conte was at Chelsea and he was playing three, so we kind of copied them. And yeah, I just went into the left of the three position. I've uh, done well and it just I've stuck to that ever since. So I'm just comfortable because also I get on the ball, I can go forward on it and obviously I can defend, which I like doing. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, you're talking a bit about some of your attributes there. Um, how did you sort of develop in the Chelsea Academy? Was there like tough moments? Was there... Was there like um, you know moments where you needed to work on aspects of your game? Was there a growth spurt? Like how is it? How was the sort of development for you in in that sort of age where we don't really see you much? Yeah, everyone has up and downs in their career, especially at young. So when I was always like an average height or small or small, my team I was never one of the big ones. And then about when I was like under 14s, 15s, I was getting growing pains a lot. Growing pains not many people had, so we I didn't really know what it was at the time. And I thought it was just like an injury. It was in the top of my hamstring. Yeah. And like I just thought it was an injury. So it kept holding me back, holding me back. And I got a scan and it just came up with, it was just really inflamed and it was just growing pains. So I just knew I had to play through it. And then at that time, with obviously at Chelsea, we was doing full time. So we was doing gym every day. And it just all came together. And I just grew loads and I got bigger and turned into the, a young man sort of thing at that age. And then I just kept, Obviously, I just kept, kept doing gym and I just kept getting bigger and bigger. And then I turned into like one of the biggest in my team and one of the most physically strongest. So it's a, it was a lot, but I got through it in the end. And, and does it, I, I see you as quite, correct me if I'm wrong, but I see you as quite a technically gifted centre back, one who's comfortable on the ball. You think it helps that you used to be smaller, so you used to have to take care of the ball and, and not use your physicality too much when you were younger. And, and do you think that helped you now? Because you're good on the ball, but now you can also put it about as well. Definitely, definitely. Because when I was younger, when you when they used to be bigger players, you didn't really want to get into physical battles. So you had to be smarter at them and better at them with the ball. So when you're having to pass quicker, one and two touch, it's kind of all added. And so when I was, when I was small until late, it helped me so much. I had to be better on the ball. Then when I did grow, it just came together and I was able to be good on the ball and also use my strength to get me out of situations. And that's sort of the thing I tried to use in the championship because if I was just a centre-back and I had no physical attributes I wouldn't it would, I'd probably get brushed off the ball so much and I wouldn't be able to compete in the league but then if I was just a strong centre off I wouldn't be able to help the team progress up the pitch so I just got to need to need to use both at the right times and make sure I'm not trying to overplay or be or trying to show my strength off too much I've got to find the balance so it helps me loads
and, and Huddersfield are obviously know a lot about you and, and did before they signed you. Um, they must have been watching your academy games a lot um, because you signed pretty much early in the summer. Um, how important has it been for your sort of good start now to have got in the door early? Oh, it's helped me so much just coming here and then the, my teammates were, I couldn't ask for any better teammates. They made me feel really comfortable early on from the first day, which I'm really happy with. And then on the pitch, it was how we play and the intensity is so much different to academy football. So it took me a couple of weeks to get used to. And then well, I'm still getting used to it now. But where it was so different, where I got in early, I kind of got used to it by the time the season came. And then I obviously had a chance to show my good attributes while pre-season. So then when the season did start, I was able to start and then show it in the game and then keep showing it on from there. Do you think the gaffer has been brave to trust you because you are still young and, you know, to get such a big loan um, at your age, in your position, especially in your position, I would say, is a good thing. So do you think do you have like a lot of thanks for the gaffers for trusting you? Yeah, most definitely, because it was a brave choice, especially at 18 year old coming to the champ, a centre half from Chelsea. Everyone might be asking questions saying, oh, is it just because he came from Chelsea? Is there no, is he needs to prove why he, why he should be playing in the team. So for him to trust me and bring me first and foremost, all I can do is say thanks to him and to trust me to play in how many games I've played in so far at the start of the season. I can just thank him again because he's helped me a lot, even in things in training, talking to me and the coaching staff around him. It's just made me be able to improve my game and then hopefully I can just keep improving and improving. Yeah, and, and did you surprise yourself by already bagging a goal so early um, and, a, and a big goal at that? I mean, I know they loved it in Yorkshire. So uh, how did it feel and, and did it surprise you getting on the score sheet? I remember it was like, I remember when it was like 94th minute and I was, the ball was there and I was like, I could just, feel, I, I don't know, not I could feel it coming, but I just held up and I was like, I might say so just wait here. And I remember getting played across and me passing it in and I was just like, when I went in, I was I just ran, but it didn't feel. I thought I felt like something was gonna go wrong. Like it's gone in, but the liner was gonna say something or something like that just to put a, a put an end to it. But it didn't happen, and it went in. I remember running over to the fans, and when I mean it was the best feeling I've ever had in my life. Seeing the fans run and all celebrate, and everyone just smile and be so happy, and the mood just changed so quickly. And then my teammates run up to me. It was just so surreal, and I was I was just so excited. Even like in the post match interview, all I was doing was smiling because I couldn't ask for a better better way to score what the ninth minute against Sheffield United, good side, and get the three points, which all that mattered. So I was just blessed, really blessed. I uh, believe you. If, uh, everyone knows how that feels, you know, just even in the stands, it would be an unbelievable feeling. But you um, trained with uh, Thomas Tuckle ahead of the Champions League final last season at the end. Um, did that help give you confidence ahead of this loan as well? Definitely, because it just showed that Chelsea also have trust in me to train with the first team. And then this season, it's helped me so much to come to Huddersfield and be able to be in a first team environment. And it's helped me be more comfortable and settle down quicker, which is obviously showed on the pitch where me and the teammates trust each other so much. Great, yeah. And, and what did you sort of learn from that? Because you're training with world-class players ahead of a game against Man City. It's not bad, is it? Yeah, I learned, I learned a lot, to be fair. Just the simple things and intensity was so good. It's, it was similar to here. So when I came over to Huddersfield, I was kind of not used to it, but I was prepared and mentally prepared to know that it wasn't going to be easy here. It was going to be a battle and I had to prove that I was resilient and keep going. Yeah, and, and you said you were looked up to a lot of the guys like Mason Mount and, and others um, from the who've gone through that pathway you've gone through. How much did you look at the journeys of those guys? You know, Reese, Trevor, um, Matt Gurhey as well, who's left Chelsea but doing well. How much did you look at their journeys and sort of think that, you know, you could emulate that? Growing up through the academy, all, all you do is look at the older players and try to be like them. So them going out on loan and just showed a pathway and then coming back and doing so well. So that's all that I can wish for, to come out on loan, do well, and then just keep getting better and better. Did you get any good advice from some of the boys? Because I know Shaloba even went to Huddersfield himself. So, and, and others have as well, like Casey Palmer and um, I think Izzy Brown as well. So did you get any advice off any of the lads about the move? A couple of players spoke to me and just said, going on loan to the championship, you have to prove yourself. There's going to be no easy ways to just get through it. So when I did go on loan, when, I, when I'm here, I know that and I kind of have to keep battling. So when things don't go my way, I can't just give up and put my head down. I've got to keep it high and keep trying to get through them. And that's sort of the advice they gave me. 
Yeah, and I, I guess um, Huddersfield came in really strong for you as well. Um, but I guess other clubs probably were in as well. What, what was it that made you feel comfortable when you sort of had your meetings, when you were sort of making the call that this would be the spot for you? Uh, Huddersfield just showed that they believed in me and the way that they do play football is so positive and it just tick boxes for me. So they tried to play on the ball, play through the lines, from even from the goalie to centre ass midfielder to strikers. And it just showed me that I would be able to play on the team and I would be able to show all my attributes and be brave on the ball and take risks, which I like to do. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you're already earning respect to your teammates. I was watching Nabi Saar, um, one of your, you know, partners, and he was praising you in an interview yesterday. I was wondering how important is it being that support of the dressing room and, and getting respect of your fellow pros as well? It's, 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 it's the best feeling because you know that they trust you and you trust them. So when if one of you are in a situation on the pitch where you know it's not really um it's not really a nice or we might lose a ball or something like that, they know that they can trust you and vice versa to help you get out of that situation. And it's just belief. So if one of your players on a ball you and you make a run, you know that they'll make the pass or it'll be perfect. And it's just it's it's a good feeling because you can just trust each other and it means so much on the pitch. And then when you do win or and you do do something right you will contract congratulate each other because it means so much to each other and we're basically we're not just a team we're basically family so we've got to work hard for each other that's that's what it is and what do you hope to achieve this season for the team and for yourself uh for the team win as many games as possible as simple as that we go out there to win with nothing else in our mind and we've got to prove that we can and for me it's, it's basically the same Make sure when I when I am playing in the team that I, I do the best I can to my best ability and make sure we get the win because that's all that matters. And um, just keep keep working hard and keep getting better. And what's the gaffer's feedback been on your your game? Is he is he happy with what you're doing? Is there things he wants you to work on? What what sort of what sort of his feedback? Uh yeah, he's he, he's told me that yeah I've I've done well, but there's always room for improvement, which I really like. Any manager can just tell you, oh yeah, you've done really well, but then. Where'd you go from there? You got to keep it up. You're not as good as your next game. So when he's helping me improve on things that I can't do better next game. So when I do get in a situation, I know because I've had a lot of feedback. So it just helps you so much prepare for your next game. So I don't want someone that's just going to tell me you done well and then that's it. Because where'd you go from there? I need someone to keep keep me make, making sure I'm on my toes and keep getting better and better. You're quite analytical about your own game as well. It seems because I feel like you don't mind being told that harsh truths and stuff like that in, and you know you look at your game and look at areas you, to improve do you, what do you do sort of after games when you like um, you know thinking about what you could have done better what you've done well how do you sort of analyse your own game uh, I've got a team and we go through it after the after each game and we go out we go through every little detail and good things and bad things you don't want someone just to tell you you're just doing rubbish because confidence you don't you don't want it to just drop but you don't want someone just to be Low and smoke up you for no reason. You need to keep working hard. So that's um, I like that. I like someone telling me the hard truth, saying if I'm not doing well, you got you're better than that. You need to improve. So I do know next game I have a little fire in my stomach, knowing that I need to prove people wrong again, and that is the biggest thing for me: proving people wrong. Every day you could do you could do good things, but always be people doubting on you. So I just have to keep proving to them that I am a good player and that I can play in the championship and I can perform for my team and get the points that we need. I guess your mum and dad don't drive you to uh, Huddersfield training anymore. <laughs> um, no. How 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 do they sort of how are they experience in your um, journey and, and do do they give you advice as well still? Yeah, after every game, I speak to my parents. So they they we go through this all together. So if I'm not doing well, they will tell me. Simple as that. And if I'm done well, they congratulate me. So everything I do is kind of like we do it together. So they're just right behind me, and I'm just the face basically. I just go out and play football, but everything else they help me with. And that's what I like so much. We're so close and we just go for everything together. And if something's not going right, they will be there to back me. And if everything's going well, they'll be there to congratulate me, which I really like. So being up here all alone, ain't, I still talk to them every day. It's not really been a much of a change from being at home. So, yeah, it's just I need to keep staying humble and staying grounded, which they help me do, and keep working hard. Yeah, you're carrying that Colwell name, so you got to you got to represent your family as well, haven't you? <laughs> um, yeah, just wanted to sort of wrap it up a little bit, but um, you know, Chelsea as well. They have the loan department. The, is there someone keeping tabs on you, and, and what are they saying? Yeah, I always get people calling me and just speak to me about games, seeing if I need any advice. 
um, off the pitch or on the pitch, and it helps me a lot. And also, at the start when I moved, it helped me settle down quicker. So I know that's always going to be someone watching me and making sure that I'm still doing all right, and they'll keep keep me keeping me working hard, which is all that matters. And you, I guess you have big ambitions for the future. You know, this has been an unbelievable experience for you already, but you want more as well. So. What do you want for the future? Do you want to progress through the England age groups? Do you want to, you know, play for Chelsea? What sort of or play in the Premier League? What are your sort of goals? My goal is just to keep improving every day. I don't want to think too far forward and think, oh, I should be playing this, that when I'm this age or that age, because anything can happen in football. It's simple as that. So I just need to keep working hard and then, like you said, progress through the England age groups. Hopefully, become a Premier League established Premier League player and just keep improving from there. And we anything can happen in football. So I've just got to keep working hard and hopefully all my goals will be achieved and I'll keep proving people wrong. Brilliant. Well, so far, so good. You've definitely proven a lot of people wrong already. So just keep keep that fire in the belly and stuff. But I think that's um, everything I need today. It's brilliant. Um, brilliant to speak to you and meet you and, and really a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks. All the best, man. I'll, keep, I'll be watching you. <laughs> yeah, thank you.